Welcome to Rotary and Serving Our Community. Today we're going to take a look at one of the partnering efforts that we have done as Rotarians in assisting one of the local community um, camps, actually. And with me today and representing Camp Keep is Elizabeth Roberts. Hello. And uh, we have with us also Trina Doherty, who is the president of the uh, Eco Moro Bay Club, correct? Yeah, correct. And uh, David Morton, who is an uh, incoming president for Bakersfield. Welcome, everybody. Um, Elizabeth, we're going to start with you. Okay. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, um, I have worked for the current environmental education program known as Camp Keep for the last 20 years. Um, Camp Keep is run by the Kern County Superintendent of Schools office. And for the last 10, I've been the program supervisor. And it's a pretty amazing job. Wow, that's yeah. outstanding. 20 years. Yes. So you were five when you started? <laughs> no, right? thank you, though. <laughs> <laughs> no. Thank, thank you. Yeah. Trina, how about you? Well, I'm president of the Eco Rotary Club of Morro Bay, and very proud of it. We're the third, only the third Eco Rotary Club in the world, so it, it is a quite an accomplishment. And I also am uh, president of the Morro Bay Friends of the Library, so I'm pretty involved in all kinds of service organizations. And I work for AGP Video as administrative coordinator. We document uh, government meetings all over the state of California and in San Luis Obispo County. So Great. pretty busy. Uh, you said Eco Club. Tell us a little bit what an Eco Club is. Most people well, have no idea what that means. Yeah, we, um, we support all the efforts of Rotary International. Our focus is, is eco friendly um, topics for our uh, programs, for our projects. So it might be zero waste, it might be alternative energy, uh, the natural environment, um, recycling, you know, what's good for the planet. And so all of our projects and programs and our lifestyles are pretty much eco-focused. That sounds good. Actually, it sounds like a good future program, so we need to be talking to you soon. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you. David, how about you? Uh, well, my day job, I'm vice president of AC Electric Company in Bakersfield, and I've been a Rotarian for about 10 years now. Uh, with the Rot Rotary Club of Bakersfield, known as Downtown Rotary. Um, the incoming president and uh, got involved with Camp Keep when my daughters went through uh, two years apart and I was a volunteer counselor. Okay, so um, since that time, I see you've been very involved with Camp Keep um, after that. And has the club then participated also with this program? Oh, absolutely. We, uh, we decided to do a fundraiser and uh, they were involved in moving a kitchen which left the entrance to the uh, camp open. And we had talked about what would be desirable to do there and they wanted to do an outdoor classroom and a seating area with a garden. And so we made a $10,000 donation and uh, a lot of uh, hard labor to get the, uh, <laughs> yes. the entrance built. Now one advantage I would think your club is have, would have is it's the largest club by the way in the district. So. 170, 180 uh, volunteers. Have you dragged them all out there at one point in time? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, we, uh, we had a few dozen out there, and it was, nice. uh, it was good. It was Great. a fun time. <laughs> How about you, Trina? How did the, uh, your club get involved? Well, Dean Thompson, lead naturalist out at the camp, had come to one of our club meetings, and talking with our project manager at the time, Brian French, uh, they were looking at refurbishing the campfire area. And so there's an amphitheater and it started out as there's some logs that need to be moved and there's a little dirt that could be shuffled around because it was a bit dilapidated and the, the big logs were kind of falling apart and the kids were mostly throwing the dirt instead of you know uh, uh, having it be useful. So we started talking about it and Brian had gone out there to uh, take a few measurements and some elevations and kind of look at it. And the time kind of slipped away where to accomplish that project, they realized it was gonna be a little a little too big for uh, for a week, just one weekend, and moving some dirt around. Right. So it it put got put on hold, and about a year later, Dean and Brian kind of got together again, and, and it was time to really do the project. So uh, I went out with uh, with Brian and Dean and Elizabeth and Rich, and we started looking at it and really starting to talk about what they really wanted, what the vision was, and what Dean's vision was. And we soon realized that it was growing as a project and um, decided to call you. 
<laughs> so uh, <laughs> we said, we need a landscape architect. And uh, so uh, Brian ended up uh, working on the plans, and we ended up uh, you know, providing some of the labor, and it became a really, really great project for us. Outstanding. Mm -hmm. We'll be taking a look at some of those pictures, by the way, shortly. Right. Um, how about you? How has Rody been involved with helping you out run that? Well, it's really been in the last, uh, I would say, about four years that Rotary has really been involved with Camp Keep. Um, about six or seven years ago, Kern County Superintendent of Schools changed, and they required that the chaperones who come with the children need to be adults. And um, at the beginning, we were really worried about that because we had always just relied on high school students, and we thought it would be really hard for parents to take time off work. and the what the bonus was that we didn't realize is all of a sudden we have these movers and shakers in the community that are really involved with their children and, and want to make a difference coming and experiencing our program for a week. So from those types of um, parents, we get people like Dave <laughs> who come out and they have a broad network of people that are able to help. And so in about 2012 is when Rotary started to really say, hey, we're here, what do you need? What can we do for you? And that was amazing. And so a lot of these infrastructure projects um, just would not have happened, would not have been possible. Um, the superintendent of schools charges less than what it costs to run the program for students to attend. They offset the cost. So that means that there is not a lot of extra money in the budget to do big campus improvements. Okay. And so then Rotary stepping in um, really provides kind of a, a stepping takeoff point for us to start fundraising efforts with other people as well. And we have noticed that since Rotary has started helping us with projects like the New Garden, other community organizations have said, hey, we can help too, and okay. it kind of um, grows, you know, in great ways. Oh, that is great. Yeah. Um, Location-wise, we're talking about um, Camp Keep, but where is it located at specifically? Well, there's two uh, Camp Keep sites. They're both on the Central Coast. The one that I'm in charge of is in Montaña de Oro State Park, um, and we kind of are hidden back in some eucalyptus trees. We don't like to advertise that we're there. It's, it's kind of a little secret spot, um, but it's been there since the 1970s. Wow. And there's another one that my husband works at up in Cambria. So oh, okay. there's two sites. Are they both about the same size? Uh, our site is the first site in we're a little bigger. Okay. We can hold about 120 students a week and 150 total, total people. Great. Well, um, we brought some slides, some pictures along with us. Um, we have, I believe, six slides, something like that. And mm -hmm. if you want to walk through those sure. and tell us a little bit about it. First one starts out with, it, it looks like uh, girls here in yeah. a tide pool area. Right. So every week kids come and, and we pride ourselves on teaching science uh, out by the coast. And so these girls are exploring a tide pool. And for many of them, it's the first time that they have ever seen a tide pool creature, um, a little hermit crab or a sea anemone. They've all seen, you know, Finding Nemo and things like that. But to actually touch uh, living creatures in the water, it's a pretty um, empowering first experience for a lot of kids. And you said uh, most of the kids or some of the kids have not seen the water? A lot of them haven't. You know, we get, we, we get a whole range of, of students from Kern County. Some are from very well-off schools and they go on field trips and, and, you know, they go out with their parents for a weekend visit to Morro Bay. But some have never left Kern County. Wow. And they come into Montaña de Oro and they see the view of the ocean. And, you know, I've had kids say, you know, look at these trees because they haven't <laughs> even seen trees, you know, <laughs> so it's pretty amazing. That is amazing. Yeah. Uh, another picture you have right here shows a, a, a hike yes. along a, a trail yeah, yeah. Uh, overlooking the ocean. Yeah. Beautiful picture. Uh, that, that's on the Valencia um, Mountain Trail. And uh, what's, what's amazing about our program, and we, we run an outdoor school, so the kids are learning while they're hiking, while they're doing physical education. And a lot of our kids have never done that. They have not challenged themselves physically um, in this way. So for some of them, it's the first time they've ever climbed a mountain. Wow. And they wow. have a lot of pride in that <laughs> at the end of the week. Beautiful. Another picture we have here shows um, an ocean scene. Yes. <laughs> Looks like <laughs> they're one. wearing uh, raincoats. <laughs> yes, and they're running. <laughs> so um, there, we have a little saying at Keep. We'll weather the weather, whatever the weather, <laughs> whether we like it or not. <laughs> so, I like uh, that. That's good. And this is El Nino this year, and we will have a lot of these pictures of children in raincoats. Uh, but you know what? They're having a blast outside in the rain, and we tell them it's okay to go get wet. <laughs> good. Yeah. Good. Another ocean picture here. Um, I believe uh, probably the same same ocean front. Oh yeah, beach area. Um, this is this is the bottom of our sand dunes hike, and this picture really shows 
um, you know, we're, we're not that far from civilization. You know, we're, we're 10 minutes from the town of Los Osos, but it really seems wild and rugged. And this coastline just shows how, how gorgeous it is out there. True. Picture here with um, some rock formations. Um, right. Would this be a winter picture? Or were there well, this is this. Uh, yeah, I can't, area. this is just part of the part of the beach that they have all these rock formations. We're teaching geology and how um, this particular por uh, portion of the coast was um, uplifted from below the ocean surface. So what the kids are walking on thousands of years ago used to be the ocean floor. Mm. Another beautiful yeah. picture with a rainbow. <laughs> So I get to work in probably the most beautiful location in the world. <laughs> and that's what that picture shows. This is what the kids experience. Would not get an argument from me. That yeah. is a beautiful picture in a <laughs> beautiful setting. Yeah. This is all in walking distance from the camp right. itself? It, it is. Yeah. Okay. And then another picture here is showing your staff, I believe? Yes. So okay. this is our staff. And um, I think we're pretty unique in the state of California. Uh, we're one of the few outdoor schools where the staff is uh, really um, recruited and compensated for being professional science educators. So uh, not everyone has their credential, but um, at least half the staff does. Uh, many of the people, uh, Dave mentioned Dean, have worked there for 20, 30 years. And so it's a place where people come and they feel passionate and they stay for years and years because they want to make a difference. Great. So we won't have you name everybody off because yeah. I don't want to <laughs> offend anybody, yeah. but you know, <laughs> Dean is going to get good props on that yeah, one. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Next picture we show um, actually is a before shot, I believe, right. of um, what eventually is going to become or has become the garden area. Right, right. So the first one here shows, um, if you want to tell us the structures that we're looking okay. at. So you're looking at our old uh, kitchen and pantry and refrigeration area. Uh, when Camp Keep was made in the 70s, we weren't allowed to stay in the state park year round. So everything had to be on trailers. Uh, and at the end of each season, everything had to be pulled off site and stored until the next season. So everything kind of just grew in a somewhat haphazard fashion because it just needed to be accessible and easy to take down. Um, so this is the back of the kitchen area and then the following kitchen, uh, the following picture is mm. more the front of the kitchen area. And back in uh, 2011, we finally got permission from state parks to put in a new kitchen and you know actually pour some concrete <laughs> <laughs> footings <laughs> and things like that just to make it a little more permanent sure. it still it still is a trailer but it's uh, larger and newer and and um, a, a big upgrade when they did that the area that the old kitchen used to be in was demolished and it was just a big mud pit and it was the, it was the first view of coming into camp was just a big hole a dirt hole and it was like Welcome to Keep. <laughs> Isn't it beautiful? <laughs> and it wasn't. <laughs> and this is where I believe uh, Dave got involved exactly. with this one from here. Exactly. So uh, we have one picture now showing uh, the construction, I believe, footings being put in for the new wall. I guess we're going to try and make that terrace where the area was going to become level. And if you want, you can walk us through the next series of photos. Yeah, absolutely. Well, when we had, uh, we had worked with some of the folks from the superintendent of school's office to ask uh, what was the best way that we as a club could assist with Camp Keep. And uh, one gentleman, Steve Sanders, is a, a senior staff with the superintendent, and he had mentioned that they were going to be moving the kitchen, and that was just going to leave, as Elizabeth said, a, a mud pit right, uh, right in the front when you arrive. And so we decided that we could put in an outdoor classroom, and you were gracious enough to uh, help us with the design and with the, I'll call the skilled labor. <laughs> so that's your crew out there laying the, uh, the foundation to make sure uh, us weekend warriors were able to <laughs> stack the blocks and uh, have them make sense and look good. Um, the next slide is a, a, quite a few of the Rotarians that came out for the weekend uh, getting instructions from yours truly to, uh, <laughs> to lay us out so we got it done right. And uh, that was a fun day. Now, um, I heard rumor that you didn't tell everybody what the uh, job was going to entail. Uh, yeah, we, uh, we took people over on a Friday night, bought them an ice dinner, clam chowder, seafood, steaks, and uh, the next day we got up bright and early and people got their work boots on and uh, put in a pretty long it work day. It was hard. Uh, it was hard. With, yeah, the blocks, I think, range from about 25 to 50 pounds. Correct. And, uh, Mostly some of, 50 pounds, by the way. Yeah, exactly. One of the yeah. gentlemen in the, uh, in the red shirt pictured there, Andy, uh, when I saw him at our rotary meeting on Thursday, he said, Dave, I haven't been able to tie my shoes <laughs> since, that, uh, since that outing. But that was, uh, that was a good time. Yeah. A lot of good work. And this was a construction of the wall going up that became the retaining wall to level that area off. That's exactly it. Um, we've 
We're uh, prepared to work. You can see the wall curving around with uh, interlocking block uh, and the gravel that helps keep it level. Um, in the uh, picture with the gentleman in the red, uh, I actually got my mother-in-law who we brought along, <laughs> Susan Owens and Paul Sheldon and myself, and there's you in, in the cap. Uh, the next slide, uh, I've got a gentleman by the name of Jeff Gutierrez working hard in his bright orange shirt. Uh, and the rest of my family over on the right-hand side, my mother-in-law, my daughter Juliana, who had been yeah, to Camp Keep two right. years prior, and my wonderful wife Christine in the gray shirt, and then my youngest daughter Caroline, who is going to be at Camp Keep two months from that time. Yeah. So she got to get a little preview. Uh, and then the next slide, uh, we've got your grandson, Zach. We've got you in the camouflage hat and your lovely bride, Roxanne, <laughs> making sure it's all done right. That's right. <laughs> there you are again, uh, back doing the skilled labor, make sure, making sure everything's plumb and square. Uh, got Zach assisting you with that and uh, filling all of the block with gravel to keep it in place. That's in the wheelbarrow. Mm -hmm. and then can, I, can I pop one thing in here? What this, this picture doesn't show you is once the wall was made, there was quite a bit of dirt that had to be shoveled. Because <laughs> there was like five or six feet of dirt that we had to shovel to raise the level of that garden up That's right. to where you see it now. It just looks like it miraculously <laughs> so appeared, but itself. that was some hard work. Absolutely. Absolutely. Of course, you put the pile way on the other side yeah, of the I camp. Know. Sorry so. about that. <laughs> exactly, with one tractor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the tractor? The tractor, we've got Dean Thompson. Uh, the dean, uh, no pun intended, of, yes. of Camp Keep, yeah. uh, certainly was there every time I was there, and I think decades prior to that. Uh, and then the next next photo, we've got basically the finished product, wall built, a uh, bunch of exhausted Rotarians <laughs> uh, settling in for the uh, the rest of the day and the and the shot, if you will. Yeah. Impressive though. That's one day's worth of work right there. Yeah. Yeah, that is that impressive. That was good stuff. That is yeah. good stuff. <laughs> Next picture we have is, uh, that would be the final portion of it, that was the staircase that we completed going to the entrance of the dome, right? Yep, that's exactly it. All the, uh, all the pavers, nice and square and plumb, and the dirt, uh, you can see behind you, the difference in the grade between the bottom stair and the top is what had to be filled yes. and compacted. <laughs> right. And uh, that was, I don't know how many cubic yards of dirt, but quite a bit. That was quite a bit. Yeah. <laughs> I don't remember offhand either. With that, um, once that was completed, we started the, um, the outdoor garden area. And maybe you yeah. can go through that with us. So uh, we, I, I think partly due to Rotary's involvement, our county office started to really look for other sources of funding. Well, if, if Rotary can kick in some money, maybe we can look for other ways. So uh, we um, worked together with uh, the PG&E um, crew, and they gave us another pretty sizable uh, grant. And that allowed us to hire a landscaper and to buy native plants and to uh, get extra dirt that we needed <laughs> and, and all the irrigation that we needed to put in and design the garden itself. And then nice. um, PG&E had a, a volunteer work day as well. Those are all the people in the blue shirts that are uh, digging the plants in. Now they worked hard, but I don't think they had quite as much sweat as the Rotarians <laughs> did. They look good there. Yeah. We show a few more pictures here, including the team that did the install of the plants themselves. Correct. So that was, that was a great work day. Um, I liked it. If you notice, I'm not dirty in this picture. No, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> well, then what's I, wrong I liked with it that? very much. It yeah. was a good work day. Yeah. Uh, picture on that one then at the end was the, uh, this was the uh, honor that was given to me by David's Club. And thank you very much for that. It was uh, actually a tearjerker for me when I was at your club and you guys named it after me. Uh, mm -hmm. Again, huge honor. One of the highlights of my governor year. Thank you very much. Absolutely. I have to say that the I hadn't been out to Camp Keep until we got involved, really, and I live in the, you know, in the backyard, but just had, hadn't known about it. But driving in and seeing this beautiful garden, and now, of course, it's all grown and filled in, and it's just so beautiful. Um, along with your name being on there, uh, Wade, <laughs> but it is beautiful. It's very impressive to come in and see that, and it just it sets the, the tone right. for the for the right. camp, I think. I and think that's what we wanted. Yeah. We wanted something really welcoming, so when the kids drive in after their three-hour drive from Bakersfield, they come in and they feel welcomed, and they feel this is a really special place, yeah. Yeah, and I think beautiful. we accomplished that. Well, we've got a few minutes here to go over uh, our next phase, phase two, which right. was the actual fire area itself, the amphitheater. With that, um, Trina, why don't you go over these pictures with us? We have a before picture here showing uh, 
what it looked like when you <laughs> took on the job. And those were the logs, the logs that were split, and I think a few termites. And, uh, and <laughs> as uh, uh, Elizabeth has pointed out several times, when you sit on one of those logs, you're sitting sort of your knees and your, you know, in your cheeks because um, you're right on the ground. And uh, so we s you can see that it, to move all of that was going to be a huge thing. So uh, the next picture is really after the demolition phase. So that one picture of the before, all of those logs were moved. Um, a lot of the sand and the dirt was, was moved. And, and um, the next picture is uh, our charter president of the Eco Club is John Weiss who is also going to be district governor in uh, 1718. And he loved riding this tractor and moving the dirt and the, and the <laughs> brick, or the, uh, the block. So he was having a great time. As I recall, he was a little apprehensive about jumping on that machine first, but I guess he figured it once, out quickly. Yeah, once he got on, it was like his chariot. I mean, he was just like, woo! You it know? was. And he was just riding that thing till he was, you know, beat red. So it was pretty funny. Good. And then you're going to see in these next few pictures, I mean, there was trenches to be dug. There was the um, post to put in for the benches. And these benches are big, thick pieces of, is it redwood? It was redwood. They're yeah. huge benches. So there was a lot of work to, um, you know, for the infrastructure for, for this and to get the drainage and the conduit for the electrical. And so you can see there was a, a lot going on um, with a lot of uh, a collection of people. We had over 65 people show up for that volunteer yeah. day. Wow. And, and it it they came from where? Because your club is 18 in size? Correct? Yeah, we had probably uh, 10, okay. you know, 10, 12 people out with some spouses that sort of got drug along, you know. <laughs> and um, I was keeping everybody refreshed, so I wasn't actually down in the... In the, uh, well, in we, the, divide, in we, we divided it into teams. We had a hospitality yeah. team, right. a bench team, mm. a digging team, a wall team, a bench team. Yeah, yeah. all of that. So, yeah. it was so the volunteers' wrestling came from Bakersfield, I, yes. I believe. Right? Mostly Kern yes. County Superintendent mm -hmm. of Schools. Oh, okay. mm -hmm. So we um, had said, hey, you know, Rotary's coming out. Can we put a a volunteer group together from the schools and, and the superintendent of schools office really jumped on board. Good. So yeah. we had about oh, ten yeah. Camp Keep staff members and the rest were made up of school volunteers. In this one picture where it looks like we're around a tether ball, uh, for it there you can see the greenhouse in the back. This is a really neat camp. Yeah. You know, they have uh, all, all kinds of uh, things for the kids to do. So then the next pictures, um, you can see we we really started the terracing had happened, the posts are in, they're shoveling sand and gravel and uh, DG into the, into the block and uh, a lot of just kind of a beehive of activity. There's John Weiss again on his chariot. <laughs> he is still working. <laughs> Anybody in the green shirt is an eco-rotarian okay. and uh, Brian in the picture with, uh, with John there. Uh, got the award for the dirtiest shirt. Yeah. He, he had the blackest shirt by the time he yes. was done and so proud of it. So, um, you know, most of these are, are just uh, just the great crew. The superintendent herself was out yes, there. Yes, she was. Christine, uh, Dr. Digging and Christine shoveling. Frazier. And then there's our exhausted group mm -hmm. at, the, at the end. <laughs> at um, the end. That's yeah. Familiar. Another yeah. great yeah. job. And we did have a before and after shot of the crew. And I yeah. remember everybody's all excited and enthusiastic. And then we're still excited and enthusiastic, but still a little dirtier. Yeah. <laughs> tired, more tired. And there's our Dean uh, Thompson right there uh, scooting through um, with uh, the block and you can see some of the benches were actually installed on that day. Yeah. So, yeah. Very uh, nice. And uh, then these pictures are really after, um, after we, uh, you know, we're done. This is um, uh, some of the finished, finished areas and the kids. Yeah. So our, our maintenance man, Rich Bowie, um, saw everything that happened and had just continued working the entire month of August to get it to a really usable level. It's not finished, but it's, it's usable. We're using it every week with our groups of uh, between 100 and 150 wow, people. So, and it's beautiful. And it's, it's actually, I would say it's stunning. Yeah. I agree. What do, we have, uh, what do you have that's left right now to complete that? So we are still in the process of fundraising. We've sold uh, uh, slightly more than half of our benches, um, 14 out of 24 uh, benches that we've sold. Um, and the rest of the fundraising money that we raise will go towards um, the final steps. We want to finish installing uh, electrical. We want to uh, finish installing the benches, uh, create the stage. We haven't done that yet. And then the final, when everything's done, <laughs> what I'm really looking forward to is a uh, is installing the flagstone all around the centerpiece of the fire. Very nice. Beautiful. 
our closing picture that we have there shows the uh, the sign. Uh, yeah. Camp Keep sign. Uh, yeah. Beautiful sign that is prominent at the entranceway to, yes. to the uh, yeah. camp itself. The dome in the background, tell us a little bit about that. So um, once again, Camp Keep was put together in the early 70s and it had to be non-permanent structures, but there had to be a big enough gathering area for children to uh, eat their meals and be indoors if it was raining and things like that. So the geodesic dome idea was um, put in place about uh, five or six years ago. We had to replace the dome. So um, this, is, this is a pretty big centerpiece that people remember. And um, we, we have our evening activities in there. We shelter during El Nino <laughs> in there. <laughs> and we eat all of our meals in there. And on the inside, it's all hung with uh, flags that are each person's, each school that comes donates a t-shirt. So the children see all the schools that have ever attended Camp Keep inside the dome. Nice. We and probably should have got a picture of that one. I do remember that. Yeah. Was impressive. Yeah, they do have a lot of displays. So they're educational displays yeah. all around. It's really a neat space. It's really a beautiful. Now, um, how many students a year would you say go through that? Uh, so we have approximately 4,000 students 4, come through. Students. Slightly yeah. under. Wow, um, that's impressive. Yes. And then our other program has another 2,000. So over the course of the year, around 6,000 students, wow. mostly from Kern County. Uh, also a few from San Luis County and a few from um, the Fresno area. Now Dave, you said your daughters went there. Tell us a little bit about their experience. What did they have to say when they, they went there? Oh, they, it, it's almost like a coming of age thing. Uh, the, the activities are so diverse from, from hiking in the creek, climbing Mount Valencia, mm -hmm. looking at the tide pools and the beach, uh, just watching the kids interact. And really what, what touched me the most the, the first time all the way through the third time was the enthusiasm of Elizabeth's staff. It's mm -hmm. as if they get 40 schools or 150 schools every year, and every time it's like it's their first one, and they're just as eager and dedicated and involved as they could be. It's just amazing, and that's what, what inspired me to see if there's any way we could help. I mean, it's just amazing what they do. Thank you. I definitely have to agree with that. I mean, we went there to work. Um, they come out after hours volunteering their time to help us out and get down yeah. with us in the, in the dirt there. So, no, I'm definitely impressed. Uh, you can tell they have a passion for what they do. Yeah. And yeah. I could see why. It's a beautiful area. Yeah. And uh, yeah. Um, When we went out uh, to view and plan and plot and plan, it was so beautiful out there. The deer were tromping through, and it was so quiet, and it was just beautiful. And, I was kind of blissed out, you know, <laughs> like, this is relaxing and really nice. And then we came out on a Friday afternoon when the kids were just about ready to leave. Yeah. And I'm like, but this is what it's all about. Yes. There was 150 <laughs> kids just chattering and they were so excited. They were going home, but they were so excited. You could tell we, that we it was really We will have to wind this one yeah. up, but thank you very <laughs> much for sharing with difference. that. Now, again, yeah. that was a quick half hour and boy, a lot of oh. information. With that, thank you everybody for joining us. Uh, as you can see, there are a lot of things out there to make communities better, to change lives and to make things better. Rotary is just one of those tools. So take a look at Rotary, see what they have to offer in your, your community, your area. Thank you.